trying to inspire other people? Or? I'm not. <laughs> you should be on film. Okay. now <laughs> so we farm to regenerate soil uh, why did we do this uh, in case there was hyperinflation money we did it for the money it's very inspirational what are the benefits of this goat farm uh, Well, yeah, whenever you have livestock and you graze them properly, it's really good for the land. So this land that we're using is going to be way better next year. And it's good for the animals, obviously, because they always get fresh grass and they uh, don't have to deal, don't have to be in an area with their own poop, which is how they get uh, diseases and parasites. Those are the main two benefits. How we do that is by moving them around in an electric fence around this large field. Uh, we move them based on uh, strategic planning and holistic management. Well, holistic management is from Alan Savory in, in uh, Zimbabwe. Um, but there's a lot of other things we're doing that are sort of taken from a lot of other people. This is sort of a freestyle farm. So if we had instead just put the goats on the whole field, what would that have done? They would have mostly like slept in one area, which would have gotten completely overgrazed and uh, probably covered in bare soil. And then the rest of it, they would just go and eat sort of the plants that they like, which would uh, pretty much kill off all those plants in the pasture. And then all the weed plants would continue and uh, the, their, they wouldn't their impact on the land, like the trampling and manuring, would be so spread out that it wouldn't even really do anything. So because we're not letting them do that, we're able to spread out their benefits? Yeah, and increase the, the benefits, because when they're closer together, they trample more, which is what this pasture really needs. It's got like six inches of thatch that is like years old. That's not decomposing. Thatch is what? Uh, just dead grass. It would be better if we had cows because they're heavier and it would be, if you wanted to regenerate this really fast, a heavier animal would just make it a lot faster. So why did we do goats? Because you can just lift them and carry them wherever you want to. Zoom in on it. Zoom in. Look at that. <laughs> I'm the most muscular one. It's my job. Okay, so we can lift all these goats around, we can move them around sort of easily, would you say? It's... Yeah, if we had invested a little more money in a different type of fencing, it would have been even easier, but it's still, yeah. an electric fence and a car battery that we can recharge so that's a pretty inexpensive way I would say of doing the fencing would you agree yeah it's the most inexpensive way yeah so and then we also built a shelter with wheels and a tarp for any of the rain so that that can move with them and wherever the shelter is you'll notice there's a huge patch of green uh, because that's where they uh, poop the most how did you learn how to do this kind of farming? I worked on a ranch in Saskatchewan, B. Barcy Ranch, uh, with the Campbell family who taught me most of this. They are like some of the original holistic managers in Canada and probably have like one of the best ranches in Canada. Um, so I got really lucky to learn from them. And then there's books on it, there's YouTube videos, which you can learn a lot from, but a lot of it you just have to learn in person. And, or from someone who knows what they're doing. How long have you been farming? Six or seven years. What other animals have you farmed? Cattle, 
goats, sheep, one yak, geese, ducks, chickens, turkeys, rabbits, pigs. Do you like goats? Yeah, they're the most friendly livestock animal, although turkeys are pretty close, but yeah. Because if you, if you hang out with goats at all, like, they'll just get eaten by the first coyote that comes along. They have no instincts to keep them alive, except for eating. And that's the same for all livestock animal, animals. So if we, like, for example, just let down our fence, they would all get eaten. Yeah. Or if we didn't have the dog. So she lives with the goats the whole time? Yep. And does she like it? Yeah. Why? Because she's outside, which is where dogs have been for all of their evolutionary time period. What do you think she does during the day? Thinks about, I don't know what, I don't know. Dark things. Mostly she's just constantly watching for anything that's approaching her territory or her goats and barking at it. So how does she perceive the goats in relation to herself? I have no idea. We'll have to ask her. Coyote, worse way to die than being eaten by a human? Yeah, because uh, coyotes will, it's going to be graphic, but they... Whereas uh, if, whenever humans, like in the worst case, if someone who doesn't know what they're doing kills an animal for food, it'll maybe take like 30 seconds for it to die. Most of the time it's like two seconds. Um, so that's a lot better. Most people who farm with goats keep them in a barn and they never are outside. So that's the conventional way. Or if they're outside, they're kept in a, in a very small pen and just fed hay. That's a North American convention, or is that in the whole world? It's North American, yeah. yeah. Why would people keep their goats inside? Uh, for one thing, to avoid the predator problem, but also uh, it's they, get, they can make more money because they can just buy, they don't have to spend money on land, they just buy a whole bunch of feed grain that's really cheap, subsidized by taxpayers, and then uh, feed it to their goats for way cheaper than... Uh, we can graze them if, if, even it's a, though, if it's a large enough scale. So At even scale, though we're probably we're probably cheaper. Okay. Because our feed is free, it, except for the land that we the land costs money, and there's a lot of labor. Yeah, the physical labor we're just gonna uh, write it off as our gym time. It's just an exercise. But you can't do that. Not as a business. It's maybe not a good plan. <laughs> Why you shouldn't be a goat farmer. Three easy steps. Don't do it. Tell you if you want to be a goat farmer and have it go well and be good for the planet and make money, you just need a lot of upfront money. You need investors so you can buy everything and do it all properly. So you'd need a breeding herd would be the number one thing from a good source. Otherwise, it will take you years to get the genetics that will make doing it on pasture work. That's one of the big things. And you need a proper mobile shelter and somewhere to keep them in winter and uh, you need to buy your own land so that you can actually invest in the soil health without losing it all every time you switch land bases um, and then get permanent electric fencing or I mean that's pretty expensive for goats because you need like at least four wires but if you it would pay itself off but uh, you could work up to that, maybe. Do you enjoy goat farming? If I did it the way that I just described, yeah, it would be fun. Because there's pretty much nothing that can go wrong when you have all the things set up properly. Uh, can you list some of the long-term benefits to this farm that having our goats on it might have? Uh, yeah, it'll just improve the soil a whole lot. Well, increase all the plant growth on the property, which... Uh, increases the soil even like soil health even more it's sort of like a positive feedback loop and 
that just means that the land is more productive for whatever you want to use it for. Or if you want to just leave it for wildlife, it's got more food for them too. Who's the better goat, Fred Van Vliet or our goats? <laughs> documentary ever. <laughs>